Let's all remember here, this is the Ryzen Tournament, the final, the main event tonight. One of these two will be competing in 48 hours. Two five-minute rounds. If we need a third, it'll be an extra five-minute round. Kicks and knees to the head of a down opponent are illegal. What are illegal are elbow. Once again, my name is Joe Farrell, joined alongside the baddest man on the planet, Joe Warren, about to see his boy, King Mo, take on the legend, Miracle Krokop. He's got his wrestling shoes on for grip. He's moving better. I'm excited to watch this fight. I was always, I was just asking you about reach advantage. One of was wondering if Mo has a longer reach advantage than Krokop. Yeah, good job. King Mo wasting no time trying to close the distance using his strikes. Krokop obviously that stance getting lower. You see that kick coming. Exactly what King Mo wanted. He wanted something low, and he's able to get that takedown down to the ground. Less, just over 30 seconds for him to score that takedown. This is exactly what Mo wanted. He wanted him to throw that low leg kick so he could have caught it into that single switch to a double. That's where we're at. Head position perfect, right under the chin. He's in the center. His, his head's not getting pushed to one side for a submission. He has to get his hands off the mat and worry about. Well, there's no elbows this round. And just look at the size difference, Joe. Mo is uh, definitely smaller. Mo is now stretching him out, putting his forearm on the neck or on the chin, lifting up and cocking his right hand back so he can land some bombs. Love to see. Nice. Nice round and pound, good position. Needs to make sure that he's posturing well. Saw Krokop there trying to sneak his left leg through, looking for a triangle choke here, but a great job so far by King Mo. Getting the takedown, working his ground and pound. But Mirko Krokop now is trying to trap that right arm of King Mo. And I'll tell you right now, this is exactly where King Mo wants to be. He wants to stay right here for the first round, uh, first five minutes, do the same thing second round, take no damage, move to the next round and defend his belt. Action! Good. 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 Referee imploring King Mo a bit more action, although I do believe he is working. But the referee here wants to see a bit more. When they say action, they also want to see damage. They realize that they would like to see damage. And I like to correct myself, he's not defending that belt. Tournaments are separate, it's a separate belt for each tournament. Here we have here King Mo. Like Joe Warren said, keeping his head in the center position, not making his head wander to the wrong side. And of course the referee says, nope, not causing enough damage, we're gonna stand up here. We got two minutes and 15 seconds in this first round. Mo's moving forward, bringing him in that corner. Prokop looking to land that left there. Got to defend the takedown first. Look for knees and uppercuts to be coming here. And Mo needs to circle him back. Push him against that. Push him against the corner again so that he cannot use those nasty leg kicks. Oh, a trip attempt there by Krokop. He's shaking that hand. Oh, there's a left to the body there. Your boy King Mo better protect every part of the left side of his body or the right side of his body. Oh, there's <laughs> and we talked. We talked about Mo keeping his hands low. They're higher than they normally are right now. I don't think those shoes are helping him much. He seems to be sliding more. I see one. This is what we, I just talked about the first round. He's waiting for that low leg kick, switch from a single to a double leg, bring him back to the ground, and win win with position. 
Yeah, it seems to be a little slippery, like you said, Joe. This is not where you want to be. You want to get a little more distance. I was just going to say the same thing. If you stand too close to Krokop, that's what he's looking for. And he wants to make sure that he's outside that front leg, that he's moving left. Less than one minute to go, and there we have here Kimo looking for the double. Now he's clinched up here. Continuing to pummel, continuing to work for that takedown. Knees landed by Krokop. There are 35 seconds left in this round. Mo has controlled the whole round. He's won this round, I think. 30 seconds to go. Look, there you see Mirko Krokop loading up there. He was yeah. looking to throw. There it is. That is a thunderous shot to the body. Oh, and it's Kimo with the comeback. But Krokop's mouth is open, means, meaning he's tired. You don't fight with your mouth open. These two guys are not messing around here. Krokop again, boy, those shins. He reckless abandonment and, Mir and there you have Kimo wanting to get that fight down to the ground. Do you think Mirko Krokop did enough? to sway the judges in that round there. No, I don't think so. We talked about this with the wrestlers earlier tonight. The second round. And Mirko, he is a tired man right now. Uh, the reason I said that is that when you're opening your mouth to throw punches and not, and not biting down, it's because you're trying to breathe. And that's because your conditioning's not there. Mo round needs two. to be smart. He needs to be smart. He needs to uh, control distance or push him against this ring and make this fight against the ring so he can't get kicked. Good job. See, he's moving left now. He's moving outside that front leg so he can't get kicked. He's got to kick across his body to get to him. Krokop, in my opinion, was smart. He just showed, hey, here's the left hand. He faked it, and we saw what happened with King Mo. King Mo immediately got out of dodge. Yep. But he needs to continue to move left and stay outside of that front leg. That's exactly what he's doing. He's basically taking your advice. Do not, under any circumstances, have your left leg on the inside of Mirko Krokop's right leg because that is what Krokop is waiting for. That's when a baseball bat will be coming your way. Yeah, that's, you know, the bottom line is you don't move into a man's power, especially a veteran like this. I mean, one good takedown, Mo. Let's yeah. set it up. See, you hear his corner, Mo. One good takedown, and this fight is over, folks. Without this one takedown, and they stand up here this whole time, there might be a third round. Oh, this is King Mo competing with his mouth open here. Yep. Oh, a nice, nice right hand landed there by King Mo. Backing Krokop up. Oh. Krokop with the left cross, throwing out the jab right now. A little bit more aggressive in this round here. Let's go, right here, set it up. Set it up. Finish. Oh, and now it's Krokop as Kimo in the corner, throwing those combinations, throwing the punches, takes out Kimo. This fight is over. Just like that. Just like that. You know, you, you get a big, powerful man. He puts so much force behind his punches. One punch can change a fight. We talked about this before with these super heavyweights. That's what we just watched. He was losing that whole fight. Lands one hard shot, he hits his face. Mirko Krokop advances. We'll be competing in 48 hours. We'll be taking on Baruto, a guy that he called out at the post-fight press conference in September, when Baruto did not show up to the post-fight press conference, Krokop got on the microphone and said, hey, with all due respect, Mr. Saki Kubara, where is this guy? All of us are here, where is he? For those that don't know, Baruto was injured. Baruto did not take too kindly to those statements. And we all saw what happened afterwards, and now these two will settle their score in the next round taking place New Year's Eve here in Saitama, Japan, in this very arena, in this ring, this as Saitama Sai Games Super. presents Rising Fighting World Grand Prix 2016. This Saitama Super Arena is going crazy. They love Mirko Kokov. Kobo, thank you for this great support. in two days for my next fight against Baruto. Thank you.
ました。